What's up guys, it's Nolan here with Okos Automotive and I'm happy to welcome you to the first full episode of the Bug Eye Revival Series. In this episode, we're gonna cover everything under the car that's driveline and wheel hub related. We covered it a little bit in the intro episode. If you haven't seen that, um, there's gonna be a card up here. Uh, go ahead and check that out. That pretty much goes over the rundown of the car, what our plans are, um, and a little bit of just what this episode's going to cover. So laid out here in this nice assortment here is pretty much all the parts we're gonna be using for this part of the project. For the most part, all brand new OEM stuff from Subaru, uh, just outside of a few things like the upgraded ARP wheel studs. Just going down the line here into some short specifics about everything we have. Um, we have complete wheel bearing assemblies, front and rear, as well as their matching seals. Um, these are our front axle seals, as well as the matching sundial seals here. We have four new axle nuts. Um, here's more wheel bearing seals, uh, new snap rings for the bearing within the knuckle. These aren't totally required, but they're a nice upgrade if you're doing everything else new. I mean, what's one more part that's brand new? Um, nice to just have pretty much everything fresh on that install. Um, a nice upgrade also along with the wheel hubs are upgraded studs. Um, so these are from ARP, they're three inches long. Uh, so you get that extra thread contact with a longer lug nut, um, the ability to run a slip on spacer, um, and just the pretty much insurance of knowing you have a really high quality fastener holding your wheel to the hub. In conjunction to that, um, that's new axle boots for the rear. Uh, like I said before, we have OEM axles back there, so we're just gonna do uh, the boot kit. This comes with boot, uh, bands, and grease, um, all in this box here, so we'll get those opened up a little bit later. And then pretty much the crown jewel, and my favorite part of what we're doing today, these are brand new from Subaru OEM axles. Um, so that's complete with the green painted cups, NTN boots, uh, fully assembled, just beautiful to look at, um, nice and shiny. I wish they would stay looking like this forever, but unfortunately we like to drive our cars and that gets them dirty. <laughs> Last little side note of all the parts we have lined up here. Uh, this is just rear parking brake uh, shoes and hardware. Um, on this car, it actually has an assortment of parts from a few different cars that don't work with the STI brake package that's on the car. Um, they're actually too small. So we're just swapping in the correct STI stuff. With the full rundown of all the parts out of the way, um, we're gonna start taking this thing apart and get to work. All right, we got all the wheels off the car. Um, now we're pretty much just working at getting down to the hub completely stripped. So that's gonna involve taking off, obviously all the brake components, um, getting those out of the way. Um, we're gonna pull the nuts off the axles, get those out of the way. Um, luckily, we are at a standpoint to remove the axles as well as we'll be replacing them. So we don't just have to slide those, we'll actually take them completely off. Um, but it's pretty straightforward from this point. So we will get uh, taking that stuff off. Well, I was just about to make a point about how if you're taking these Brembos off these older cars, you need to be careful about the threads pulling out um, just because they get rusty and generally they can have issues with seizing and even snapping inside the caliper itself. And that's never a fun time with these expensive Brembos. Um, luckily for us, they were anti-seized when they were installed, so it wasn't too much of a, an issue on that end. Um, something that is interesting about this caliper though, uh, it appears the rotor has been doing some self-clearancing. Um, so you can see there, that's how that installs. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that was happening or what was causing it. Um, potentially it's the, just the rotor is the wrong fitment. Um, but we will check on the other side and kind of see what's going on with that one. And hopefully we can remedy it with some parts and not have to buy new calibers. it just stays. Um, it's not exactly ideal. Uh, luckily, we'll be covering that in the next video, which is going to cover uh, a full suspension overhaul in conjunction to 
everything else we're doing today. Here's our front uh, steering knuckles and rotors. Um, we're leaving the axles in just for now to keep the trans sealed up until we're ready to basically get to that part. Um, just looking at the knuckles here, they seem to be okay as far as like wheel bearings go. Um, of course, this one is covered in axle grease due to that torn boot. Um, and then over here with the rotors, this is what we had going on with the one uh, contacting the caliper. I still don't really know what's going on with that or why. Um, so I hope just a parts change will improve the fitment issue, but we'll see. Um, the other side did not have that. It just kind of has your typical uh, pad wear, um, pretty normal. So hopefully when we get around to that point during the reassembly that this won't cause any issues with the new parts. With all that checked out, we're gonna move on to the rear now um, and we'll get it all laid out and kind of give a full overview. See that right there? That's why we like clean cars. Any of you local to us will know that this does not come out on Midwest cars. Not without a fight anyways. <laughs> So kind of like I mentioned in the beginning of the video about the parking brake, um, this had some mismatched arrangement of shoes and hardware that are not correct for these STI knuckles. Uh, so that's why it's partially disassembled. Um, basically, we're gonna pull all that off um, and replace it with the correct stuff. Uh, so that's just gonna involve removing the rest of it on this side, um, as well as the cable. Um, that's pretty much all that's still holding the knuckle in the car. It was like winter break and we went on some like Right, so normally with your cable, there's like a clip in the back of the knuckle that secures it in place. Um, this one was just just not there, so um, easy disassembly, I guess. Saves me a step. Um. For the front axles here, um, these are the older style, uh, what you'd call female axles. So they have the stub that is supposed to live in the trans. Um, however, for doing the axle seals and sundials, it's easier to pop the whole stub out of the trans. Um, so that's what we're gonna do uh, here. And basically just before uh, punching or instead of punching the roll pin out, um, you just pry on the axle as if it was like a male axle. Um, but we'll get these things off and out of here because AutoZone parts suck. Well, I probably should have drained the uh, trans fluid first. That's a little bit of a mix up on my end. However, um, this is probably the root of our trans leak here. Um, whether or not that inner spring band there was pulled out when I popped the axle or if it was already like that, um, I'm just willing to bet either way that this is the seal that was causing the issue. Uh, regardless, we're going to replace both um, and the sundial seals, um, but after we let this drip for a little bit, I will actually drain it here and uh, get all that fluid out of there. All right, so here's everything uh, we're pretty much gonna be working with, uh, removed from the car, nice laid out for your viewing pleasure. Um, kind of just going down the line here, I did lay out the rotors as well, um, just to kind of show everything here. Um, this was our, our culprit of the caliper contact, which is pretty gnarly. Um, again, hoping to kind of deal with that when we do reassembly a little later. Um, 
front matching rotor also has the same kind of blue hot spotting in the center here. Um, you can see the, the stress crack starting to form. Not quite there, but definitely if you ran these a little bit longer, they would start to uh, die of death. Um, we don't want that. Um, as for the axles, here are the fronts. Uh, these are our lovely AutoZone axles, one with a ripped boot, uh, the other one without. Uh, we're just gonna replace both because we want nice parts on the car, um, not cheap parts store axles um, that are known to have joint and boot issues for their entire lifetime. Here's the rears. Um, they are OEM. They got the nice green cups. Um, these do have boot issues. Uh, we have two inners and one outer. Um, so we'll be going through and replacing uh, both the boots. I believe it's on this axle and then just the one on here. Um, not anything crazy going on with the rotors or the brake pads in the rear. Um, simply just the issue with the parking brake, which um, we'll address during reassembly as well. Um, last pretty much thing, not anything crazy going on with the knuckles here. They're not super rusty. Um, I'm not even worried about taking out like the pinch bolt for the ball joint. So that's good to see. Um, but basically, we're gonna get started with the axles um, and we will work on that disassembly right now. All right, so here is our uh, axle servicing station that I've just kind of put together here. Uh, pro tip, if you're doing axle boot job or just taking the joint apart for any reason, um, just grab yourself a full ass roll of paper towel. Like, you're gonna need it. With these axles, we're gonna start with disassembling the inner joint here, um, and then everything's gonna come off that way. The outer joints, uh, while you can take them apart, they aren't really meant to be serviceable. Um, so you're really supposed to do everything out that way. Um, so that's pretty much what we're gonna do. Just start with this joint here. And I like to just put the bar in a vise like that. Um, it's not gonna fuck it up. <laughs> that's one way to do it. Um, <laughs> you, this boot is uh, pretty uh, at this point. Um, and our kit is gonna come with a uh, complete, uh, pretty much everything we need to replace. So that's gonna be our clamps, boot, um, everything. So don't really worry about breaking anything, taking this apart, except for the axle, like major metal components themselves. Um, luckily here, I was able to just slide the boot off the cup. Um, so you can kind of move it out of the way like that. Pull this snap ring off. There's a guy right there. So with the outer cup removed, um, now your your cage and bearings are just kind of chilling. Oh look, I just dropped one. Um, the point I was going to make is to uh, be careful not to drop these um, and lose them. In this case, I didn't lose it, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah. They are just kind of chilling, um, so I like to take them all out and just set them down. Uh, looks like one dropped into the boot here, um, just so they don't run away from you. <laughs> now, I almost feel bad replacing this one. It had a really tight seal on the... Uh, All right, we got all our parts here for the inner joint uh, cleaned up. So just kind of hit them quick with some brake clean, wiped them down. Um, the key here is just getting all these surfaces that the boot actually seals or clamps to clean. Um, so we're not gonna be messing with that yet because we still have to do the outer uh, boot here. Um, so all this is still on the axle, not taken apart. You just funnel it all off that way. Um, so all we gotta do is install our boot, um, add the grease, and clamp it down. So we'll get to that right now. It's gonna be the signature. I'm ready to... You're ready to bot? What's the... Our clamper. Know the feel. All 
All right, now we're on to the inner joint here. Uh, this one goes together a little bit differently from that one just because it is actually taken apart. Um, so here we're gonna put the clamp on the boot um, or on the shaft, it doesn't really matter. Don't be afraid to show it who's boss. Good. Oh, like that. Okay. All right, so now with the boot installed, we can take this, put it together. Uh, it's kind of loosely, just like that. Onto our spline, like zot. Pony boy. Okay. So with the inner joint completely assembled here, um, all that's really left to do is fill the cup with grease and uh, put it all back together. What we have left. So now the cup is gonna hold the rest of that together um, and all that's left to hold the full assembly together is just this ring, which you can kind of sneak in from the side. There it goes. Seat the boot. No. All right, with the axles done, we're now moving on to the wheel bearings. Um, so just gonna start with one of the front knuckles here. Um, basically, it's a, a full disassembly um, before we're able to start using new stuff and put it back together. Um, so we'll get to taking this guy apart uh, normally you do it in a press. I prefer to use my, my on-car tool, uh, even on the vise. Um, so it just consists of some threaded rod and some strong nuts and thrust washers. Um, it typically takes care of it a little bit easier, um, especially if we're doing it on the car. In this case, we are off the car, but like I said, I just prefer this, so. Exactly that. There's like no. It was like a lot. When it was when it was plexing. A keen observer may think that this is a lifter bucket. Um, that's because it is. <laughs> it's come out of one of the various engines that I've destroyed personally. Um, and it just so happens to be a great fit for um, the hub here to get the other side of the bearing race off. Um, so I've been using this, actually this specific bucket for a long time and it holds up great. Um, so good on them for making good buckets uh, for your head. Look at that bucket putting in work, baby. Hell yeah. I don't wanna see anyone talking shit in the comments about my bucket press piece. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny, the first hub that we pressed out or pressed out um, has this giant gash in it. Um, pretty indicative of what I see is like, these bearings were done before and someone was like, how do I get this off? Um, and instead of using something like this, they decided to cut it, um, I'm assuming because they couldn't figure out what to do. I don't know. Um, seeing that the bearing was installed and they didn't seem to be too bad, um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, it looks like they at least made an attempt to grind that smooth. So it feels okay, certainly not ideal. Um, and I guess we'll just hope that installing the new bearing with this isn't going to cause issues. But I guess we'll see.
With the hub out of the wheel bearing here, um, this is a prime opportunity to do longer and upgraded wheel studs. Um, so we went with the ARP three inch. They come in packs of five. Nice improvement just for a full thread engagement with a longer uh, open-ended lug nut, say like a Muteki SR48 uh, or something like that. Um, main reason for doing this while the hub is out is since these are longer, you can look on the knuckle here, um, when this is installed, they don't really fit, right? Where the short ones, those you can just kind of shove right in there. Um, there are workarounds to this, like people will grind down part of the knuckle in order to get just enough clearance to put them through. Um, but again, the best opportunity is just to do it when the hub is out of the bearing as they just slide right in. Um, so pretty straightforward there. Things that we have here. Ooh. Man, I don't think there is a thing. Here's another uh, pro tip just from doing a bunch of wheel bearings. Um, we obviously have the bearing installed now and it's ready for the hub, right? Well, wrong, uh, because you need this. Um, and this cannot go on if that's on. So make sure you install your outer seal before you put your hub back in. Bam. Frustrating. Bam! <laughs> Bam! That it's done! So that's pretty much everything with the, the knuckle done. Um, we're probably going to, at some point, get these ball joints out for some new ones. Um, I know maybe not this side, but the other side had the boot torn. So we'll come back to that. But at least the wheel and hub and all the seals and our new wheel studs are done. Uh, so pretty much we just have to redo that process with the other three. Um, we won't bore you with all the clips of the same thing you just watched over and over again. So we'll go ahead and knock that out um, so you don't have to suffer through it. So here's uh, pretty much the main culprit of our front gear oil leak, um, at least what I determined to be the driver's side axle seal. Um, it probably is just the inner seal, but with these older uh, higher mileage trans, you never really know. So we're gonna go ahead and pull both the seal here um, as well as the O-ring around the sundial. Um, generally, that's just pulling the seal first with a tool like this. Um, and then marking your sundial, counting the rotations, et cetera, um, and then swapping that O-ring. Pretty straightforward, um, so we will knock that out real quick. So here, fresh out the box, Company 23 sundial tools. Uh, these basically just let you lock right into those fins and put a ratchet on it the way you're supposed to um, instead of what a lot of people do is tap them with a chisel to get them to rotate and then the other way. Um, that works. Um, it's certainly not ideal. This is very ideal and works great. Um, there's one for this side and there's a smaller one for the passenger side. Um, these are an awesome product. I would highly recommend. Might be eight. Oh, seven. Typically what happens when these have failed is they'll be from being soaked in oil. And then when you rotate them, they'll tear.
So with the driver's side done, we'll go ahead and repeat that on the passenger side. We have another uh, Company 23 tool. It's basically the same thing, just the smaller size for the smaller dial. Um, we'll go ahead and mark it and uh, get that done. Oh, it's that. Basically. Yeah. So that pretty much confirms my initial observation um, of thinking the driver's side was leaking. This seal came off intact and in one piece, so generally, uh, you can assume that it was the other side leaking, but nevertheless, we're doing both because we want to be thorough here. Um, no one likes gear oil leaks or honestly just gear oil in general unless it's just completely sealed inside your trans and you don't have to touch it or smell it or look at it. So um, we're hoping for that. All right, so we're all done with the front axle seals. Hopefully that will be a leak-free setup now. Uh, no more gear oil on the ground. That's going to be a nice pairing with our brand new axles we got here. Um, can't have gear oil leaking around those, of course. Um, so with that, we're pretty much done with all the assembly and, and removal and replacement things, and uh, we can wrap it up. All right, so just a small detour here before we wrap everything up. Um, I mentioned a few times throughout the video about our rear parking brake situation. Um, basically, we're just swapping out the shoes for the correct ones. Um, what was in there is presumably just standard WRX size parking shoes. Um, you can kind of see the, the size difference there. Um, so basically you would pull it and they weren't the correct diameter so they wouldn't meet the rotor and stop the car. Um, these will pretty much make up the difference, um, make everything work again. We do have some new hardware to go along with that as well. Um, the only difference here is we aren't going to do this with the knuckles off the car just because we have to connect the cable to the bracket um, as a part of the assembly process. So with them off the car, that's kind of hard to do. Uh, so these are gonna be set off to the side until we're ready to do a full assembly. All right, so with that, uh, we have everything wrapped up here as far as our driveline and axle components. Um, throughout the video, I've pretty much given you the rundown on everything that we did, so I won't uh, keep you here too much longer and repeat all of that again. A little preview for the next video. We're going to be covering more undercar stuff, um, effectively everything suspension, bushing, and arm related. Um, so that's going to be control arms, bushings, sway bars, end links, um, you name it. If it's under the car and there's rubber in it, um, we're going to revive that and make it new either by rejuvenating it, uh, what we have, or by replacing it with brand new stuff. We've got another big parts list uh, brewing for that episode, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, click subscribe, tell us in the comments um, everything you saw that you loved, you didn't love, um, what we did wrong, what we did right. We wanna hear it all, so please talk to us in the comments, like this video, share it with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one.